Hi folks, Lou here to talk about game names and how much they tell us or don't tell us as the case may be. And unfortunately, the trend nowadays is to have game names that don't tell you anything at all, though they may sound poetic or interesting in and of themselves, but they don't tell you anything about the game. There should be marketing benefits to the title of your game. And when you design a commercial game, you have to be thinking about marketing it as well. Shouldn't the name of the game tell the customer something about it? Well, we do have some games like that. Terraforming Mars, Power Grid. After all, there's thousands of games published every year, and you've got to attract attention in some way. One way is the cover. Another way is the title. Many war game names tell you what the game is about, though even those are getting esoteric, quoting something from Shakespeare or something even more obscure. Battle names, of course, like Battle of Gettysburg, tell historically oriented people a lot, though that might be obtuse to others until they resort to Wikipedia. But so many non-war game names tell us absolutely nothing. St. Petersburg, Venice, San Juan, Carcassonne, Mercurius, and so many others. A city, a location, a what's that? Like Mercurius, I don't know what that is. It doesn't tell you it's a stock market game. So, my most recent game that I'm working on is a two-player made-from-scratch version of Britannia, and I call it Dual Britannia. That seems a way to tell people what it's about. Now keep in mind game titles like book titles are usually determined by the publisher. So my name for Britannia itself was Invasions of Britain which was quite descriptive but I have to say Britannia turns out to probably to be a better title. It's more compact, easier to remember. Most of my games that have been published use the title that I had devised for it, but Britannia is not one. You get the same thing for books. Uh, often I compare books and, and games, and a lot of the things are the same. I would have called my game design book Learning Game Design, but the title, as cooked up by the publisher with discussion with me, was Game Design, How to Create Video and Tabletop Games Start to Finish. Are we running out of unused names? Yes, but game names are often subject to common law trademark, the TM in a circle. They're rarely uh, a registered trademark and are in a circle because registered trademarks cost a fair bit of money. Once the game is out of print that is no longer sold, the common law trademark is likely to expire. Registered trademarks also expire after time limits. So, game names can come back into availability and even trademarks can come back into availability. A way to deal with the possibility that a game name has been trademarked or perhaps has been used before is to use subtitles. I don't know if there's a game called Caledonia, but I very much doubt there's one called Caledonia colon the early history of Scotland, which is one of my prototypes. Now you can look up registered trademarks online, of course, but common law trademarks are more difficult to get a handle on. So my advice is try to give a descriptive name to your game unless you want to be obscure. And I don't know why you'd want to be obscure. Thanks for listening.